Hello. <coughs> um, uh, I'm a designer, uh, as Heidi mentioned. Uh, it's interesting because I follow on from, a Dutch, from one Dutch movement to another. Um, I moved to the Netherlands um, in 2008 to study um, masters in industrial design. Um, <coughs> I went there because the Dutch have a very particular way of looking at, at, at objects for the home and, industri and design in, in general. And it's this conceptual design thought. And the previous slide there showed conceptual design of what the Dutch see it. But in fact, when I went there, what I found conceptual design was, was this kind of thing. It's notice, noticing small details that make people's lives easier. And I became obsessed with this sort of stuff. So really what happened, in, what, what I began to do is I just started becoming this kind of documenter of, of, of things I saw around me. And this is, uh, this is one from the Venice Biennale, uh, the pavilion in Japan, um, where obviously you can see how this guy's um, it was a bit chilly, and he's ad hoc this chair into the back of a heater. I mean, it really doesn't need many more words. Um, this is a flea. I found this in a flea market in um, in New York, and um, I, I'd I'd like to give you a prize if you could guess what it was. But this is a if, if no one shouts in, I'll keep describing. It's um, it's a cup, a coffee cup that's been made with a purpose-built little reservoir, so that um, when you're sipping the drink, your moustache doesn't get caught in it. Um, this, this one here is, um, this is, this is where I like to, I like to think about honesty in design, how, how, how certain objects, um, have, a, have an inbuilt honesty that then dictates their form and function. Um, this particular object is a, is a window cleaner's ladder. Um, it's tapered at the top, so it only leaves one mark at the top of the glass, so you don't have to keep cleaning. Um, this, this particular one was more about domestic design. And, uh, and what we see on the streets as well. Um, this was in Granada in Spain. Um, it's, it's just a few hooks put on the outside of a bin and a dustpan in a sort of square, like up here at Five Ways, but I don't think you'd see it there. Um, and this, uh, and I also like to think about how objects work and how they get used and how they grow in different places. This is basically a, a set of kitchen scales. It's been adapted so you can read the weight yourself when you stand on it. So this is this sort of point where you began to think, well, when did kitchen scales become Anyway, um, so this, is, this, this then led me to think, well, what, what, is, a, what is an object that is perfect? How do, how do I find a perfect design? And this, this design here is something that I've always held, held strong belief in being one of ultimate objects. Um, it's a toilet roll holder, but it uses no, 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 no mechanical fasteners, no fixing, just, uh, just glazed porcelain to let the loo paper roll slide out. Um, this, this object here is <laughs> a stock separator, again, um, we can all understand how that works, but, you know, uh, one material, clever thought, um, and uh, a kind of unique view. Um, this is another one of my favourite all-time objects, um, aluminium, which is probably the third most conductive material, uh, filled with glycol in the handle. Um, the shape informs how, obviously, how you use this for ice cream, but the glycol um, captures the heat in your hand and sends it down to the shaft of the scoop and lets you scoop out ice cream. Um, this, this part, as you can see here, this, this is actually one of my own objects, so when I was left with this idea that I had to make something with all of these thoughts, I thought, well, how can I, how can I bring something meaningful to design um, a new object when we have so much around us? It's great. So I sort of started readapting objects that existed and um, this is, as you can see, a, a very old Le Creuset pot that has just got a simple wire ring so you can use the lid as a, as a trivet. Um, I like the idea that these objects have been in, in production for so long that you could fit this to one you bought yesterday or one you bought 20 years ago. Um, then another, the, the second part of my project was looking at the more design classics. It's the original angle poise lamp, um, designed by Herman Terry and sort of 1940s, uh, really gained domestic popularity because of the blackout zones in, um, in uh, World War II. Um, you had to have fixed focal lighting before, so you could read without obviously um, alerting anyone of your presence. Um, and I reworked this by um, hand blowing a, a replica, a ghost of the original shade and inserting LED lights in the top. Um, this is a an object that I've always loved. Um, Xavier Pouchard made this Tollex chair that is seen ripped off around Sydney 
endlessly, um, which is a shame because it is actually a beautiful object. This is something that's been made industrial, industrial production that's lasted very, very well. And uh, I wanted to subtly update this chair. So how can you change a chair from something that was meant to be used for, by dock workers in thick denim for 20 minute lunch breaks into something that we now use domestically? So by adding a vegetable tan leather slip, it sort of moulds and packs out as you use it. The idea was to create something that was, uh, had more longevity and more scope. Um, now this is, a, um, this is an object that uh, I found when I was studying in the US um, on exchange way, way back, and it's actually a sawhorse bracket. Um, it's made out of plastic and uh, it doesn't work. But it's a really good idea. And it was an idea that I loved so much that I decided I have to re-engineer this thing and make it again, and make it last, and make it last forever. So I went down the route of sand casting it. And now it's sand cast, it's changed critical dimensions, and I spent about a year trying to figure out how I could make this thing. And eventually, I've got a production pattern, and it's all made in, um, locally in, in Australia. And it's a furniture part for using, for making, um, really endlessly adjustable furniture. You can make uh, long tables, small tables, bench seats, uh, countless objects. Um, it's really up to uh, the client to sort of specify how, how this thing can be operated. Um, and I sort of leave this, this talk with this image here, which is something that makes me kind of smile because, in fact, with design, um, something I learned as I kept, kept going and kept going was that um, you've got to make mistakes. Bergeon Pod originally started sewing bits of cord together to form uh, bowls and, and other shapes, and he saw that they started cupping into making things that look like masks, so then he started making masks. So that's sort of how I kind of like to move forward.